Hello everyone, we are back here with um, a shoulder mount of one of the weirdest antelopes of Africa. That's what I call it, the most odd looking antelope from Africa. So we got this shoulder mount going on, it's a straight wall uh, shoulder mount, wall hanging shoulder mount. And what I'm trying to do here is uh, basically trying to find out what I should cut the skull so it would line up with the mannequin. And uh, for that, as you can see, I hold it in two different uh, angles from the side and I cut, uh, basically put a couple lines exactly where I need to make the cut. And now the cut is made. As you can see, it fits like a glove right on top of the form. Sometimes there is a little bit of a adjustment that which is which is not a big deal So I needed to do that at least by holding it on the mannequin I can fit the skin and make sure that the skin is going to to be perfectly fit for the mount before I start mounting and uh, uh, Securing that skull top on on the mannequin So there was a little bit of an adjustment needed I needed to cut out some I marked it and I removed that piece too it seems like the skin is going to fit fairly close and uh, we can put the skin away and start applying the screws and uh, basically attach the skull plate permanently to the mount after. So we proceed with uh, sanding as you can see and what I like to do I mark the areas that needs attention because you're looking at the whole mount, like whole mannequin in one color and it can easily slip your mind. So basically I mark areas that I think it needs um, attention in terms of making the cuts, applying clay, adjustments, a little bit dent or a little bit um, raised areas that need to be sanded off. So. That helps a lot. I mean, when you have it, then it uh, uh, you make sure that you're going into those marked areas. And also, I like to use my reference to line out where those wrinkles and rolls are going to be, because African animals they all have rolls and wrinkles. So once I have decided where they're going to go, I basically saw them in like. Um, cut through them like about going in about half inch not too deep I just go in about half inch and then uh, you will see that I'll use my file to create a, basically the wrinkled base that I'm trying to basically enhance with clay after Okay, now we got all all the lines underneath the chin almost um, cut out. Now we got to do the same thing uh, behind the back of the neck. We just cut about half inch into those lines. And then what I do, I start, um, as you can see, I start going in an angle between each cuts and trying to dig them out and come up with the shape of wrinkles right on the form that's just the beginning of roll creation or wrinkle creation there is multiple ways of doing it and um, I'm not a pro at this this is just the way I came up with and it works for me so and I grab my file and I round off all the uh, areas that are kind of like sharp point or sharp edges make sure that on the top of the wrinkles it's fairly round that's what, that's what it looks like you know when a, you know when we got a real when you look at a real wrinkle it's not like doesn't have any sharp edges so I'm just cr trying to create the, the same thing underneath the, um, the throat too African animals uh, pretty much they all have lots of wrinkles I don't know why they got it but they got it and uh, and their skin is totally different when it comes to mounting them their uh, 
they they either don't stretch or when they stretch they don't retract they just stay stretched <laughs> so you got a, you got your work cut out for yourself when you're working on um, African animals but you know that's that's the way it is that's how you learn applying different techniques on different animals so this video is going to two parts and um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's one of the older videos again, but I have lots of details about how to make rolls and and um, how to apply them on your animals. So if um, some of you guys uh, don't know what to do or um, haven't decided, this could be one way for you to, to practice with and, and maybe you can benefit from. So continuing with uh, rounding off all the edges off of our wrinkles and um, next thing is creating some thin layers of clay in order to make a steady thickness of clay I have two spacers just as you can see and uh, a big wood dowel put a clump of clay between the spacer spacers and roll them out so that way um, basically your clay is going to be flattened out for the thickness of the spacer which here is about eighth of an inch and then you easily peel it off wet down your form and apply it right on top of the areas that you have created those wrinkles and then jam it in or tap it into the wrinkles you don't need to recreate all of those um, gaps that uh, basically you, you made on the form. Just replace what you took out with clay because when you have soft clay to work with, the, uh, the wrinkles you're going to be able to make is going to look a lot nicer than just uh, trying to make it on, on the hard surface of the foam. So we do the same thing almost underneath the, the throat. I cut out the areas that I want to to have uh, basically I'm sorry uh, cut out the clay to the same size as the areas that I'm applying the wrinkles and uh, we'll just go on both sides and we'll call it good that would be pretty much the foundation of of our wrinkles and then the rest of it would be uh, from when the skin is on the mount or on the mannequin and then we'll apply and uh, press in the skin into the gaps that we've created or the wrinkles that we've created and uh, we'll, we'll finish it that way after we put the uh, hide paste of course so it's kind of like fun uh, to do this it's a little bit more work of course but it's it's a different work so I don't do too many Africans every year but uh, maybe eight or five or something like that or sometimes even less than that sometimes more but I mean it's a good break from regular North American mounts so it gives us a break and uh, of course it's more fun too once in a while if it's always like that I, I'm not sure how much fun it's going to be <laughs> because it can get too, too much and uh, and overall it's very labor-intensive all right so what we got here the wrinkles are ready and I'm going to do all those little repairs or little areas that I mark down if it needs some attention with the clay work and I'm gonna take care of those you know these forms are fairly good but they all have their own little uh, adjustments that you need to do and uh, sometimes it's less sometimes it's more and if you just want to rely on what comes out of the mold from the from the manufacturers or from these companies uh, you might be just putting out some crooked mounts or uh, not symmetric mounts once in a while because some of them they come really really out of whack which is not fair to us because we want less work not more but I mean it is the way it is sometimes the molds get old and they don't match up properly or they have expanded and when they pour the foam to rise inside of it it all gets out of whack but anyway we continue with the thin layer of clay on the nose 
on the nose pad and we put some around the nostrils too and uh, we're gonna apply some little rolls of clay on the lips too this mount left the shop about four months ago so this is how old this video is and um, I have to kind of like you know um, make sure that the videos I'm putting out is not all the same so I'm trying to basically help out uh, a big variety of people out there so some people like to see more bird mounts some people are not into bird taxidermy they want to see more um, big game heads and whatnot so we'll stick with what we have and uh, I'll try to mix and match them so everyone is uh, kind of happy every other time I try to put a mammal video or a bird video or uh, I have actually I just finished a bobcat I think I'm going to have a bobcat series from um, like step by step from mounting them till finishing them hopefully and if I, if I have enough uh, basically time to to do all the videos and I also have that black duck that everybody's af uh, asking it pretty much got finished I took all the pictures today and next week hopefully I'm going to put up that uh, black duck uh, series as well so anyway back to this animal we better don't wander off so the chin when I tested it the chin was too small so it's one of the flaws of the form so I had to en enlarge the chin size and the chin muscle with some clay so we pretty much got it all built up right now and I think it's uh, we're getting very close to um, apply the um, skull and just get the get the work rolling so when you apply some of that clay sometimes they get into the gaps that you made into um, into the uh, in for the, that you made for the mouth and you just better just push them out with the knife so we apply some height paste around the neck not all over not all over not not on the face either it's just around the main portion of the neck just enough to slide the skin through because the skin is going to be uh, I have sewn it together so it's kind of like tubed so as you can see I like to cover up my face with some plastic wrap to make it slippery now we slide the skin right over the head now it's time to attach the skull get rid of the plastic and then we're gonna attach the skull if you don't know why we do this why do we um, make the skin tubed when it when it's been opened up first of all it's much easier to sew it on the floor uh, on the table first first of all and second of all when you have a sewn up properly sewn up uh, tube skin if it's been skinned out tubed or if you want to turn it into tube um, okay first of all it's much easier to sew it on the table and second of all when you have it tubed it really lines up on the neck a lot easier and a lot more properly so it's basically win-win it's easier to sew, it's quicker, and the skin distributes itself properly around the neck versus you trying to pull every stitch or every five stitch, pull, 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 and stitch, pull, and stitch, pull, and stitch. So you do all the stitching and minimize it only for maybe, I don't know, six to 10 inches behind the back of the neck. That's the reason we, I like to sew it. So most, most hunters bring their animals tubed anyway this is the end of this part hopefully you liked it stick around the second part is coming up and uh, we will see you guys there thanks for watching